Europe is home to quite a few large open wild spaces, but it used to be home to a lot more. As the human population has grown across much of Europe, we have displaced many of our native animals. This has caused many of them to decline in number, but thankfully not everyone is happy to stand by and watch them disappear. There are many ongoing rewilding projects in Europe, and in today's video I will be going through just a few of the animals that are being reintroduced. To start off with, we will be heading over to the Iberian Peninsula, as we have the Iberian Lynx. The Iberian Lynx is endemic to the Iberian Peninsula, and it is one of four species in the Lynx genus. Today this species is currently listed as endangered, but not too long ago it almost completely disappeared. The Iberian Lynx's population declined due to overhunting, poaching and habitat fragmentation, but it was also disappearing because its main source of food was disappearing. The European rabbit has been introduced into many countries around the world, but it's originally native to the Iberian Peninsula. These rabbits are the Iberian Lynx's main source of food, and in recent years they have been ravaged by disease. Myxomatosis is often fatal to rabbits, and unfortunately it's also highly contagious. It can completely wipe out rabbits from certain areas, and by doing this it also wipes out the Iberian Lynx. By the turn of the 21st century, the Iberian Lynx was on the verge of extinction, as there were only 94 individuals left in the wild in two isolated subpopulations. Thankfully, action was eventually taken, and these cats were bred in captivity, and rabbits were restocked in certain areas. The captive lynx were eventually released back into the wild, and this reintroduction program has been a real success story. By 2012, the population had increased to 326 individuals, and as of May of this year, there are 1,668. Thankfully, this reintroduction program is still ongoing, and I'm sure most people across Europe will be thrilled that this cat was saved from the brink of extinction. For our next reintroduction program, we can head to the UK and Ireland, as we have the white-tailed eagle. The white-tailed eagle is a very large bird of prey, and it's widely distributed across temperate Eurasia. It's in a genus with three other iconic eagles, and just like these other eagles, it is a very impressive predator. It mostly specialises in feeding on fish, and it's known to target up to 70 species. They're even known to steal food from other birds and otters, and because of their size, very few creatures will mess with them. These eagles used to be found in every country across the UK and Ireland, but by 1918 they had completely disappeared. The reason behind their decline was mostly due down to overhunting, as they were often targeted by shepherds and fishery owners. Their eggs were also targeted by collectors, and this all proved too much for the white-tailed eagle. Thankfully, this bird has been successfully reintroduced into Scotland, and there are ongoing reintroduction programs in Ireland and England. There are plans to reintroduce this bird into Wales, and hopefully they will be able to get back to their historic numbers. Earlier this year, a white-tailed eagle chick hatched on the Isle of Wight, and this is the first time that this has happened in England for over 243 years. Hopefully this is just one of many, and the white-tailed eagle will call the UK and Ireland home for many years to come. For our next reintroduction program, we will be heading over to the Italian Alps, as we will be taking a look at the Eurasian brown bear. Europe is home to a few brown bear subspecies, but two of these subspecies are endangered and critically endangered. The Eurasian brown bear is still listed as least concern, but it has completely disappeared from some areas. As some people see bears as a threat to livestock and a threat to humans, they have been criminally overhunted for centuries. The Italian Alps used to have a healthy brown bear population, but over a period of a hundred years they were almost completely wiped out. Eventually, protections were put in place, and today there are active restocking and reintroduction programs. These bears are slowly returning to their alpine territories, but this program has been met with some resistance. Many local people in the area don't want bears to be reintroduced, and their situation wasn't helped by a fatal bear attack earlier this year. This underlines the complications that come with rewilding projects, but it's important to remember that we don't own this planet, we share it, and we need to make more space for the animals that we share the planet with. For our next reintroduction program, we will be heading back over to Wales, 
as we will be taking a look at the European Pine Martin. The Pine Martin is a mustelid native to parts of Europe, Asia and the Middle East, and they are highly adapted woodland predators. They are known for their climbing ability, but strangely they hunt most of their food on the ground. This food normally comes in the form of birds, insects and small mammals, but they are targeted themselves by red foxes, wolverines and golden eagles. These mammals were once found across Great Britain and Ireland, but they were thought to be mostly extinct in England and Wales by the turn of the 20th century. In the 19th century they were hunted for sport and their fur, but one of the biggest factors that led to their decline was habitat loss. By 1900, 95% of woodland cover in Britain had been removed, and this was the Pine Martin's natural habitat. This led to massive declines across the UK, and a decline in Pine Martins also led to a decline in native squirrels. Famously, most squirrels in the UK are invasive squirrels, and most of the UK and Ireland's native squirrels are found in Ireland, Scotland, Northern Ireland and the Isle of Wight. Strangely, this is also where you can still find pine martins, and this overlap in distribution is more than just a coincidence, because it seems as though pine martins directly benefit red squirrels. Even though the pine martin will hunt red squirrels, it seems as though it prefers hunting grey squirrels. This means that red squirrels have little competition in areas with pine martins, and this is why it's so important to reintroduce them. Some of the pine martins from Scotland were successfully reintroduced into the Forest of Dean, and so far these reintroductions have been successful. As of 2022, there were thought to be around 40 animals, and hopefully in time they will spread even further. It really is exciting to see these pine martins in our forests once again, and hopefully they can benefit our red squirrels too. Our final inclusion on this list is a bit of a strange one, because for me it's pretty close to home. I only get to look at most of these reintroduction programs through articles and research, but this one I got to see in person. The next animal we will be taking a look at is the common crane, and this bird is being reintroduced into the Somerset levels and moors. The common crane was once found in Britain, but it went extinct here almost 400 years ago. It was a victim of hunting and the draining of wetlands, but thankfully today it is being reintroduced. If you're from the UK or you're visiting, I highly recommend visiting Slimbridge Wetland Centre. This is where you can see lots of wild wetland birds, and it's also been the home of many successful reintroduction programs. I went to visit this wetland centre last weekend, but it wasn't for the sake of this video, I just wanted to go. While I was there, I managed to see these cranes, and the people at Slimbridge are working hard to reintroduce these birds. 93 young cranes were released over a five-year period, and they adapted to life in the wild more successfully than anyone had predicted. The survival rate was much higher than expected, and so far the project seems to be a success. Today the total population is believed to be around 200 birds, and personally I'm thrilled that these birds can be found in the UK once again. Slimbridge also played a role in another very famous reintroduction program, and it's a story that I've covered in a few videos before. It features one of my favourite birds, and this bird is the Hawaiian Goose. I managed to get a video of these birds, and if you don't know their story, check this video. In short, these birds were heading towards extinction, but through captive breeding in Slimbridge they were saved. If you want to learn more, I once again recommend going, as it really is a great day out. If you think you know of any other animals that could have made it in this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.